Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. My name is Kathy and let's talk about some books. Welcome to the new background. Um, this is just a temporary one um, until I move into a more permanent place. Don't worry, I'm gonna try and find a better background soon. So today I'm doing my Q3 review for my A Classic A Month reading challenge. I am finally almost caught up on these. Um, this video is technically just July to September, just two months late. Actually, I would have done this at the beginning of October, so technically just over one month late. Anyway, um, just to recap, I have been doing the A Classic A Month reading challenge for three years now. It's a challenge that I've set for myself where I pick out 12 books at the beginning of the year and I assign one to each month. This year I did end up picking two books per month just as a bonus challenge for myself, although I haven't been doing so well so I'll probably go back to just one next year. I do have a video listing and introducing the 24 books that I picked for this year. Um, so I'll link that video as well as the Q1 and Q2 reviews. Um, this will also be part of a playlist, so you can check out the A Classic A Month Reading Challenge playlist as well. Um, oh, another thing about this video is I'm not going to have the books to show you guys because I did leave them back home in Vancouver. So yeah, but I'll put up like the covers. That's enough introductions. Let's get on to the books that I read in July, August, and September. This was a period where I did a lot of catching up in terms of my reading, um, so it was quite prolific in that sense. Starting with July, the first book that I picked for July is The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. So this book focuses on various characters in, the, in a town in the like, deep south of the United States. Um, I had pretty high expectations for this book. Um, again, not sure why. I think sometimes when I really like a title of a book, um, I tend to, that tends to like boost my expectations for it um, by a lot. So I was a little bit disappointed with this read. It wasn't really my cup of tea. There was nothing like inherently wrong or flawed about the book, I just didn't really connect with it. It reminded me a little bit of 100 Years of Solitude, to be honest. I don't know, I just can't... I, this is like a trend that I'm, I've noticed, is I tend to connect less with works by American authors, at least like in terms of if we're talking about like uh, 19th and 20th century uh, literature. I don't know why, like I don't really know, I can't really identify the difference between American literature and British literature um, of that time period. I can't like, I can't explicitly explain why. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any ideas as to that, uh, please let me know. So those are pretty much my thoughts on The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. Uh, moving on to the next book that I read for July, and that was The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare. Um, I really enjoyed this. I think I had forgotten what it was like to read Shakespeare. Because it's been so long, I kind of like this year before going in when I picked the book, I was expecting it to be kind of difficult. Surprisingly, I didn't really find it that difficult or at least not as difficult as I remembered or imagined for myself. But maybe that's because there's like less pressure now, I think, compared to when I was reading it for school. Now I can just enjoy the play. And actually, while I was reading this, I was also reading um, Fasti by Ovid because, as you guys know, that took me a long time to get through. And so Shakespeare was definitely easier to read than Ovid, which makes sense because it is a lot more recent. Um, 
yeah and that's pretty much it um merchant of venice what else i think before going in i had read a few things about it being cons like potentially anti-semitic but i didn't really get that from the text it was there is anti-semitism presented and portrayed but the text itself isn't necessarily anti-semitic at least from my reading and un like interpretation of it. Yeah, that's it for The Merchant of Venice. So those were the two books I read for July. And then moving into August, the first book I had picked was Villette by Charlotte Bronte. I had picked this because um, I wanted to read more <laughs> of Charlotte Bronte. Um, you know, everybody likes Jane Eyre, but I wanted to, like, I didn't want to I didn't want that to be my only experience of Charlotte Bronte so yeah I picked up Villette um, because I had heard that it was a very autobiographical work in nature and a lot of it is based on her own experiences as a governess in Brussels I really enjoyed the book the book really resonated with me I really connected with the protagonist Lucy Snow um, it's hard to say which one I like more, Jane Eyre or Villette. I would say they're good in different regards. Jane Eyre is more fun to read um, just because it's a more like wholesome and complete story. Like it, it goes full circle and you get your happy ending and everything. So it is more fun and enjoyable of a read. Um, Villette is a little bit more, like if Jane Eyre was optimism, then Villette is a little bit more like realism. Lucy Snow, um, the protagonist, does a lot of thinking and reflecting. She values the inner life, like she values the inner life um, of her thoughts more than her like physical bodily experiences which I can relate to a lot. So that's probably why I also really liked the book. Um, I do think that I am quite similar to Lucy Snow in many ways. Before I read the book I had seen some reviews saying that like they didn't like the book because they thought Lucy Snow was very like unlikable um, but I didn't really experience or think that at all. Maybe it is because I do think of myself as being like her and therefore like I, I wouldn't find her <laughs> unlikable unless somehow I found myself unlikable. We tend to like characters and people who are like us or at least we give them more like we give them more leeway in a sense um, and it's not even like a conscious decision it's just our ego trying to protect us I guess I think next up for Charlotte Bronte I want to read Shirley then the next book I picked for August was Moon Tiger by Penelope Lively so this book made an appearance in my last video the book haul um, and I did say that I was going to talk more about it here. So yeah, I had minimal expectations going in. Not minimal as in like low expectations, just that I didn't have any sort of expectations, which like I've said is a interesting and I think mostly good thing just because I, that might be the most accurate. Because if you have like really high expectations and it doesn't meet them, then maybe the book was good but just because you had set this like super super high standard in your head but objectively it was still like a good book but anyways yeah i just want to say that like i did enjoy the book it's interesting because like while reading it i was kind of going back and forth on how i felt the book not that it ever went into like i don't like this at all um, but I think I was just trying to form a relatively like uniform opinion of the book. It was very strange, but I, there were a lot of things about the book that I liked. So overall, I would say that I liked the book and I, I, and I would recommend it. 
Um, it has really interesting narration. Um, Penelope Lively goes back between first person and third person. And so the like first person is obviously Claudia, the main character. And then the third person is sometimes Claudia's perspective, but she also includes scenes from other characters' perspectives. And she'll often describe the same scene or the same event from these other perspectives. So it's really interesting to see how the different perspectives view this one event or this one uh, like moment in time. Yeah, and they like weave together really nicely. So I think that was really well done, really interesting. And another thing that I really liked is her exploration and discussion of history as a like field of study. Because in the book, Claudia is supposed to be a historian, like she writes history textbooks, or she wrote and published several history books over the course of her lifetime. Um, and so there's a lot of thoughts and ideas surrounding the, the concept of, of history um, as a discipline which I really enjoyed. Um, I, of course, didn't study history in terms of like post-secondary education. So obviously like a lot of these ideas are, are newer to me. They're not things that I have thought about a lot. So I did find a lot of those ideas that were presented um, really fascinating. Yeah, those are pretty much all of the points I wanted to say on Moon Tiger. Again, overall, it was an it was an interesting read. Um, plot wise, nothing like super exciting, but of course, it's not a plot driven work. It is more focused on the reflections and the ponderings and like ideas. It's more focused on abstract ideas than um, like actual events or action. So yeah, that's Moon Tiger by Penelope Lively. All right, so the last two books will be the books I read for September. My first pick was Impatience of the Heart by Stefan Zweig. Impatience of the Heart, I believe, is a new translation. An alternate um, English translation of the title is Beware of Pity. This was a, like, just a roller coaster, a whirlwind of a read. So the other English translation of the title, Beware of Pity, um, gives you an idea of the themes and message of the book. Um, but essentially it is set just before uh, World War One, and it is about this Austrian soldier who makes a um, like small mistake and then the events that happen afterwards um, as he gets carried away by his pity. As you read, at least for me, as I read it, um, I became increasingly frustrated and annoyed at the main character, Captain Hoffmiller. He is just so, like, in the beginning, I think he is a... I mean, I guess you could argue that throughout he is a sympathetic character, but for me personally, over the course of the novel, he just makes these increasingly bad choices. I started to lose my sympathetic feelings towards him. The author is warning against the impatience of the heart, or as he, as he explains what uh, pity, at least one form of pity is, which is that essentially it's a way for ourselves to not feel the discomfort. It's a quick way for us to soothe our own discomforts at someone else's misfortune. So anyway, I think this is a good example of a book in which it's a good book and I like the book, um, yet I don't like the characters, at least not the main character. The other characters I kind of don't have super strong feelings for. I don't particularly like them or dislike them. I do recommend it. It's a very well-written book and Stefan Zweig is an author that I really enjoy. Then lastly, the second book I picked for September was The Awakening by Kate Chopin. This was a really quick read. I would say it didn't like absolutely blow my mind away, but I did think it was really good and I enjoyed reading it. I 
think I understand the sentiment and the frustrations and the feelings that she was trying to convey. It's a good depiction of a woman's like spiritual awakening. I think the blurb or most blurbs or most people describe it as like a sexual awakening, which is true, like that is part of it. But I do think that tends to be overly highlighted and focused upon. I think the like sexual awakening part is just one manifestation of her awakening. It's about much more than just sexual awakening. That's my thoughts. I really liked it. There's a quote that I really enjoy in which she's talking about the sacrifices that she would make for her children. Um, I think it's something along the lines of she would give all, essentially it's like she would give food, her wealth, she would give even her life, but she would not give herself. And that just really stuck with me. It really spoke to me because I also think that there's a distinction between giving yourself, which is almost like giving up who you are as a person, or like who you believe you should be. Giving that up is different than being able to give up your life. I don't know if I would say that I loved it, but it was really thought-provoking and it was a good read and it was a good work to experience. So I do recommend reading it at least once. It's very short, so it's not going to take up months of your time. Anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to say for The Awakening. And with that, that wraps up all of the books that I'm covering for this video. Again, it kind of feels weird not having the books with me. I'm so used to like holding them up or even just like having them in my hand while I talk about them. But yes, unfortunately I don't have them with me. I am, so like as of now, as of October and November, I am back on track in terms of reading my two classics per month. And hopefully it stays that way for this last month and a half of this year. So I'll be going over the last six books in my fourth quarterly review. As always, if you've read any of these books, um, share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're interested in reading any of these books, share that as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!